Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to the 10th edition of the Emerging India series presented by ICICI Bank and CNBC TV 18 where we're putting the spotlight on the contributions of SMEs to the Indian economy. Now as a build up to the Emerging India Awards, we're bringing on board some industry stalwarts and we ask them to draw on their expertise and experience to discuss some of the issues faced by SMEs in India. On this episode, we're looking at the need for SMEs to consider diversification as a way of scaling up and expanding their business. Small or medium enterprises in India often look towards expanding their geographical boundaries to tap new markets. To expand the scope of their business, one option readily available to these companies is that of diversification. But Indian SMEs have major concerns with it. Does diversification leave businesses vulnerable or does it act as a safety net against downturns in a single industry? While diversification can help a business build stability against volatilities in revenue and stay ahead of the competition while reinventing itself, one of the major risks that SMEs fear is losing focus of their core business. This week on the Emerging India series, we're bringing on board the former MD of Britannia, Vinita Bali, to discuss the importance of diversification for any business. FMCG veteran Vinita Bali has had the credit of being the first woman to head a major consumer goods company in India. She has played a crucial role in building major brands like Cadbury, Coca-Cola and Britannia and backed by her experience and expertise, she is the non-executive director of global boards of Syngenta International AG, Smith & Nephew PLC, non-executive director of companies like Crystal, Titan Industries and is a member of the board of governors of IM Bangalore. If we are specifically talking about SMEs in India, then I think India is a different market to, let's say, some of the more mature markets. What do I mean by that? Most categories, most market segments in India are under-marketed and underserved. So if I were to think of an SME in any sector, whether I'm in automobiles, I'm making parts for construction, I'm making, you know, consumer goods, biscuits, you know, dairy products, what have you. Most markets are underpenetrated and underserved. So therefore, I would, my first advice to any SME would be that you've got to, if you have identified a gap in the market that you believe you have the competency to cater to, then just strengthen that core. And if at all, go around, grow around the course, rather than go into a totally new segment with a totally new product. Speaking to us this week about the risks and challenges of diversification for SMEs is the VP Sales and Marketing at ID Fresh Foods, Mithuna Paya. ID Fresh Foods was started in 2005 by PC Mustafa and four of his cousins who realized a market for fresh and hygienic foods and capitalized on their idea. The idea of batter came in when uh, you know Nazar, who who ran uh, a store in in a place called Tipsandra, saw this whole uh, whole need for batter batter which was uh, there. You know, uh, batter was being given out in polythene bags with a rubber band on top. You know, which was technically very unhygienic. You really don't know what went into them. The idea originated from there. ID believes in giving fresh products uh, to consumers. The ready-to-cook segment is growing at around 24% year-on-year and ID Fresh Foods is growing at three times that number. In India, we are present in the west of India, which is uh, Mumbai and Pune. Uh, uh, Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad on the east side and Chennai, uh, Bangalore, Mangalore and Mysore. That's our India footprint. In the UAE, we are present across UAE. Uh, we are also looking at uh, the other Gulf countries. We ended up last year with around 62 crores. You know, and uh, right now, if you're looking at it, you know, we are growing really fast. You know, we are clocking nearly around 9 to 10 percent sequential shift of month on month, which is big for for this uh, industry and the category. We are also uh, also growing very very well on our our core products, which is batter and our Malabar ma Malabar Prota. The flagship product of ID Fresh Foods is their idli and dosa batter, but the company has also considered diversification of their product line. We actually diversified into moving into categories like parotas, 
Malabar Parota is what we launched. With that we have wheat parotas which is an extension of the parota family but then more healthy and more nutritious uh, stuff made out of whole wheat. Uh, then we have uh, the mini meals parota which is smaller parota in, in nature which is which is an extension of the uh, Malabar parota. We have recently launched something called the junior parota which is, which is for kids largely. We will operate in the fresh category only. You know, we will never get into categories which where preservatives, chemicals, additives, flavors, etc. need to be added. So we are very clear about that. Hence, we are we are looking at categories which complement our brand philosophy, which is fresh. One of the challenges that ID Fresh Food faces is understanding if they can extend their existing portfolio or establish a new portfolio to address the need for the newer markets. What is closest to the brand, we will never tweak, tweak that. So from a consumer perspective, you know, can we, can we move into uh, areas which are, which are uh, relevant and which are, which are hot uh, in terms of uh, revenues? On that note, it's time for a short break. On the other side, I'm in conversation with the former MD of Britannia, Vinita Bali. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Emerging India series. I'm now joined by Ms. Vinita Bali and we're here at the lawns of the beautiful Leela Palace in Bengaluru. Ma'am, thank you so much for coming on the show. How important is diversification for any business? You know, diversification is a choice available to businesses to grow. Um, if I were to rewind, I'd say the purpose of every business is actually to generate profitable growth and a meaningful cash flow that is capable of returning of generating great returns to shareholders or all stakeholders, then diversification is a strategy certainly available to companies to grow. Companies have been very effective with diversification. There are others that have been less effective. So I don't think it's a one size fits all. Right, it right. is a question of what is the financial leverage the company has because you know you get strategic leverage once you've got financial leverage. So if the company is in a cash strong position and is looking at diversification, it's great. There are some companies who have diversified as a defensive strategy because they don't want to be acquired by someone. So it depends on what, where the company is, where the industry is, which market you're operating in, um, you know, what is the financial leverage the company has. So it's hard to give an answer. And you know, like with everything else, there's diversification that works and diversification that doesn't. If you're talking SME specific, now mm -hmm. SME specific, the rules of their game are totally different from what large organizations right. play with. Uh, your advice for SMEs who want to who want to talk about diversification. Mm -hmm. So they might have resources, but they're confused. Should I use that for existing uh, scaling up my existing business or you know trying something new? You know the thing, the case for diversification only to my mind uh, becomes relevant if I have meaningfully and profitably exhausted growth opportunities in the current product market segment that I am playing in. Um, if there is growth available in that, in that vector, mm. then why would I want to run around, develop new competencies, etc.? I'm talking about an SME business. If you're talking about a model which says, okay, you know, I am a mini Warren Buffett of India and I've got all this cash yeah, yeah. That I'm, through which I'm going to create a portfolio of smart options. Now that is a totally different strategy. You know, so it's very important for an SME to conserve resources, to commercialize opportunities they have identified profitably, to ensure that there is enough resource available for growing the core of the business and then expanding from the core rather than, as I said, running to different kinds of businesses because, you know, whichever business you go to, you've got to start with building that competency. What about the thoughts of uh, forward integration or backward integration as opposed to uh, out and out diversification? That's also something that SMEs very often want to consider oh, yeah. because it's starting small yeah, or maybe yeah. spreading their product by way of uh, supplementary products or complementary products. It also is capturing a larger part of the value chain. So, if through backward or forward integration, I am either able to capture a larger value from the value chain, 
or make myself competitively stronger or create another advantage either by access to customers or access to vendors or suppliers or markets then it's a great strategy right. it's a wonderful way of um, you know taking small meaningful adjacent steps rather than a big step into the unknown which by definition is fraught with higher risk right. and maybe higher reward but certainly higher risk what are maybe some of the two three uh, important points that smes who are looking to maybe diversify i think by definition when you are an sme you have identified a certain gap in the market mm -hmm. and you've created a business model to um, to fill to find a market in that gap profitably given that priority number 1 has to be to strengthen your position in the core of what you've defined as your business priority number 2 in terms of growth has to be to create a business model that is enduring and that is sustainable and that is capable of generating cash on an ongoing basis priority number 3 is to look at adjacencies around the core that enable you to capture either a larger part of the value chain or create a bigger advantage with customers or vendors priority number 5 once you have done all of that and you happen to be in a market which is now looking like a market market which is no longer embryonic or a market which is mature then look at possibly other you know products in other new markets but i think till you have served the market in which you have entered mm. provided you've made the right choice now right. i think the other thing for smes would be just because i felt that there was a gap in the market and i could fulfill it i've gone in with a product and it's not succeeding you know i think wisdom is also about making the right choice on when not to pursue mm. something as much as it is to pursue something yes so that's you know then it's better to cut your loss say okay i made a mistake i'm starting a fresh and this is what i'm going to do now okay so keeping all these points in mind definitely trying to work around the core competency but also keeping a watchful eye that if things are not working out then cut your loss you have to figure out what What's you are right really speed? good at yeah and if you figure out what you're really good at then expanding from that is not an issue but okay. that takes diligence it takes discipline it takes hard work and it takes you know being very agile and nimble especially in the beginning thank you very much for that ma'am on that note it's time for a short break on the other side miss bali and me are in conversation with mithun apaya of id fresh foods don't go anywhere we'll be right back Welcome back to the Emerging India series and now joining me and Miss Bali is Mithun Apaya from ID Fresh Foods. Mithun welcome to the show. Well we've got Miss Bali here so why don't you start uh, firing off your questions for her. My first question is about the whole space of value added dairy. You know how how exciting is the space for a company like ID to get in? You know and what what should we do actually to uh, to ramp up uh, chances of getting into the uh, value added dairy space? You know the question I'd have for you Mithun and everybody else in uh, ID Foods is why are you looking at dairy when you've got so much opportunity to grow in the business that you currently are in um, it's great you've touched uh, 100 crores which is no mean achievement but the market that you're in <clears throat> is already uh, underserved and underpenetrated you're only in a few geographies you're not even all India so rather than strengthening what you have already created and building around it my question for the consideration of your entire team is why would you look at dairy which is a different business it is a different business model uh, it's a very large space but you know you're selling idli batter and then we're looking at value added dairy there may be a time to look at value added dairy but you know handling milk is a totally different competency from handling wheat and uh, rice that requires a different set of manufacturing facilities which you may or may not have but the question you've got to ask yourself is is the time right right now uh, for you to go into that or do you go into that once you have expanded in your core geographically 
or built around what you're already doing. You know, you're already dealing with rice and uh, wheat flour. And you've built a 100 crore business through a limited geography. I would say that to conserve your resources, generate cash, do really well in what you're doing, it perhaps makes sense to look at geographic diversification before you start looking at complete product diversification. In fact, uh, Mithun had a question on uh, geography. North is one uh, sector that they want to expand towards. Should they con uh, continue with the existing product line or maybe uh, get in more products if they want to tap the North market? Alu paratas and you know, a lot of other complementary categories. Yeah. You know, it's, it's actually an interesting hypothesis. I would say that, um, you know, in the South, most people have the wherewithal to make idli and dosa batter at home because, you know, yeah. it's part of the South Indian everyday repertoire. Whereas the North Indians love to eat idli and dosa, but it is an extra thing that we are doing. So my hypothesis would be, given the freshness of your product and so on, taking it to the north of the country where idli and dosa is not staple, though it's got a very pervasive uh, use and presence, uh, is a great thing. Then again, if I understand your product, it's not about you know, taking it out of a freezer, heating it up in a microwave and serving it, but doing something with it. Um, you know, I mean, there is a whole host of other snacks which is very time-consuming and cumbersome, which still, from a core competency point of view, is still getting you to deal with cereals and so on and so forth, and not going directly into uh, milk. Exhaust the growth opportunity in what you're doing really well now, um, and then look at other areas of expansion. Another area which we um, want to look at is this whole diversification into different channels. Mm -hmm. So direct to home is one channel which we uh, we are considering uh, looking at, uh, similar to the milk model where you know a batter could be reached out fresh to homes. So what's your view on on this? No, I think that is a more interesting avenue to explore, certainly in markets where you've already created a brand out of ID. Um, so take take Bangalore, which is where we're sitting. You know, ID is available as a co-branded thing in Nilgiris. ID is available as ID in other places. I can go on Big Basket and order it. I think there, if you were to look at a direct to home and, you know, uh, still stay within your promise of freshness, um, that could be, that channel diversity is an interesting diversity because if people want to feel that they're getting something, a batter which was made 24 or 48 hours ago is what I'm using to make, uh, you know, idlis on the weekend, that is a great proposition for the consumer. I also feel that um, in, in your own minds, you've got to be really clear what is the DNA of ID. Uh, how many consumers actually know that when I'm buying an idli batter from ID, it has no preservatives. It's not something that I can buy and keep in my fridge or in my freezer for six months, take it out and make an idli. So defining and communicating the DNA of what you stand for becomes very critical, not just for the products that you're selling now, but also the new product uh, innovation that you might think of doing at a later stage. So it's like saying everybody else uses preservatives, but I know when I'm buying ID, it is as though I have made it at home. So how do you fulfill that promise? So DTH is great where, you know, you can even go to the consumer and say the reason why you don't find us on supermarket shelves is because we want our promise to you is that you will get it. 24 hours or 48 hours from the time we have made it, just like you do it in your own kitchen. Ms. Bali, just your final words of wisdom, your final words of advice to Mithun and ID Fresh Foods and also to uh, other SMEs out there who are uh, maybe looking to get into or are already in this uh, space. You know, I would say you've uh, proven the idea because you've got a 100 crore business. This is the time to really get very clear about what is your brand? You know, what is the DNA? What characterizes you? What makes you distinctive? And then look at all possible means of amplifying that distinctiveness, whether it is through product, through product extensions, through distribution, and so on. 
That would be the first thing. The second thing really would be to take the successes you've created in the markets where you're in and replicate those in other markets. The third thing would be to say, you know, given the competency that you have of handling cereals like rice and wheat, what are the other batter type products you could use uh, doing cereals? So you're adding on to what you've got. Um, you know, the fourth thing is from plain parathas to stuffed parathas, you know, we talked about. So there is a whole geographic extension, portfolio extension. And then I would look at what are the other adjacencies because, you know, you're going from making your consumer's life more convenient to saying what are more and more areas of convenience and how can I move from occasional foods. Actually, if you can think of a way of moving from occasional foods to everyday foods, you know, then, then, uh, then the sky is the limit in a market like India. On that note, thank you so much, Ms. Bali, for coming on the show. Thank you, Mithun, for being here. And thank you so much for watching. From the entire team, many thanks. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.